Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a round tapestry. I did two pre-washes on this tapestry. It's a screen print, and so it felt like it had glue on it almost. So um, I do recommend washing it twice, but that's totally up to you. And so then I soaked it like I normally do, and I'm going to start by just folding it directly in half. I'm really taking my time and making sure that the seams line up because I want the pattern to match and I want it to be nice and centered. And then if you notice the pattern, there are uh, different like shapes. So elephants and then flowers and then this decorative shape. As I fold it, I'm going to be focusing on those lines as my lines for folding. You know how I usually take a piece of kite string and a washable marker and mark out my pattern? I'm just going to use those round circles as my pattern. I hope that makes sense. So this is somewhat of a heavy cotton. It's not super heavy, but it's not like t-shirt material. So I'm making my pleats as small as possible. I want to make sure that I have maximum saturation on this. And I'm also starting very small here because as you work your way out to the end, the pleats are going to end up becoming taller and taller so I don't want them super duper thick. Now I'm going to secure the project and for this project I'm going to use rubber bands. And I'm going to start out with my tiny baby hair rubber bands and then just increase the size of the rubber band as I go up. So I think I start with the baby rubber bands and then I go into my second favorite rubber band and just work my way all the way out from there. You could also use kite string if you prefer that. I just like to use rubber bands as often as possible because they're just quick and easy. As you guys are watching me fold, some of you might be thinking, hey, that thing's pretty cool looking. Where did she get it? I wanna get one so I can make one too. Take a wild guess. Yep, you're right, I got it from Amazon. And as always, I will put a link for it down below in the description box, along with everything else that I use for tie dye. So go ahead and check out the description box. Um, a lot of your questions will be answered down in there. I have an announcement to make. So I launched my nature channel to show you uh, stuff around the Pacific Northwest. And I decided to name it Pacific Northwest and Beyond um, because I might just not only show hummingbirds, I might show the mountains and the beaches and maybe do some gardening tips and tricks because I grow really beautiful prized dahlias. So I might share that with you. So it's not just about hummingbirds. But if you can, I sure would appreciate it if you would just head on over and subscribe to the channel. Even if you don't watch everything that I put up, um, just having those subscriptions is really important when you're beginning to try to grow a channel. So it'd be super duper helpful. And you guys know how much I appreciate you. So thank you, I do appreciate it. And also just like leave me a comment and say subscribe because I wanna make sure that I'm able to appropriately thank you. Remember how I mentioned in the beginning that I'm starting out with small pleats because in the back end they get rather tall? So all I'm doing now is just sort of adding some secondary pleats in so they're not so tall. Again, I'm looking for total saturation with this project. And to be honest with you, you don't have to be meticulous about your pleats because if you're gonna oversaturate, 
you're really not seeing the pleat lines anyways. Just something to think about. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And for this project, I'm just going to be doing a basic rainbow. The only color that I don't normally use in my rainbows is marigold. And I had some that's been mixed up and gosh, it it's definitely over a month old. So I just wanted to make sure to use it up instead of pouring it down the drain. But like I said, I'm just gonna be making the basic rainbow pattern all the way down to the end. Keep in mind when you make yours, you can make it in any color combination that you want. I just happen to be obsessed with rainbows. So I'm just going to continue adding my dye in a repeating pattern all the way down to the very end. I wish I had this centered in the screen better. I've been working on moving my dye room around and getting it organized and so my camera angles and everything have changed and I got a lot to figure out. Um, but I had to make something big enough that could handle this very long tapestry. So I'm using my longest tote. It's the kind that goes underneath the bed for like wrapping paper. And then I'm using Mr. Tie-Dye's method. So I took one of those closet racks and I cut it to fit inside the tote. And then this is PVC pipe that I used to Sawzall and help to cut into little bits. So it's propped up, that way the project isn't sitting in the muck and it works out perfectly. So the rack, I actually found up at the grocery store next to the laundromat, it was just like laying out in the trash. So I brought it home and sanitized it. And then the PVC tubing, I believe I picked that up. At, it was either Lowe's or Home Depot. And then the tote came from Walmart. I'm adding the dye with a very heavy hand. This is my first time making one of these and I have no idea how it's going to react. You know, will it uh, accept the dye? How is it going to look? I don't know. And so I wanna make sure to have 100% thorough, full saturation. Um, yeah, you know, you live and learn with each project. So in hindsight, maybe I wouldn't need to use as much dye, but I would do it all over again if it's my first time. That's how I learn, by trial and error. You know, the next time, maybe I'll do a nice dye instead.
I let the project rest for about 10 minutes. That way the dye could have a chance to sort of seep down into the fibers. And then I just flipped it over and I'm going to repeat the same exact process on the back side that I did on the top side. I'm going so heavy handed with this. If you notice, my yellow is almost gone. When I started this project, I had two cups in each bottle and I've used so much yellow, it's almost empty. Yellow disappears, the other colors swallow it up. And also with the fuchsia red, I'm going really super heavy because fuchsia red doesn't saturate very well for me. It doesn't really creep into the fibers like the other colors do. Turquoise is one of those colors that wants to overpower everything. It seeps and creeps with no problem. But yellow and fuchsia red, I always have to add extra. I have it oversaturated the way that I want it, so next I'm going to cover it and batch it for 48 hours. It's been 48 hours and I'm going to explain how I batched it. So I took the tote and I wrapped it up in my electric blanket and then I covered it with my afghan. And I do have a tutorial on that process, it's in the playlist of tie-dye tools. I, For the first 24 hours, except for the sleeping hours, I had the electric blanket set too high. I really wanted to help it have a lot of vibrancy. It's colder right now here in Oregon, so even though that the thermostat is set to 70, it still feels kind of chilly. And those first 24 hours are super important because the dye and the soda ash are reacting. You're having that chemical reaction and you want it to bond with the fibers. And again, my first time making this tapestry, I have no idea what it's going to do, so I wanted to give it the best fighting chance. And look at all that unbonded dye going down the drain. So I way oversaturated it, and that's fine because that's what I wanted to do, but next time I know that I don't need to go so crazy with the dye. That's just wasteful. Okay, so let's get to the rinse out. So I'm treating it like I do everything. So you wanna start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then gradually increase the water up to hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. Now this thing took over 10 minutes to rinse um, because there was just so much dye. Um, so you could plug up your sink and just soak it in some hot water, but uh, that's not really my method. I just rinse and rinse and rinse with cold water and then hot water and then I take it to the washing machine. So I did two hot water cycles using Kirillon and that got all of the dye out of the project. But I checked it on the second wash with my little plastic cup, I scooped it up. The water was, it was kind of a little bit murky but it was pretty much clear. So that gave me the signal that I was ready to do my final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft brings softness back into the fabric after the dyeing process. And I get Kirillon and Millsoft from Dharma Trading Company. And again, those links are down below in the description box. And then I put it in the dryer and then I ironed it. And then I tried to figure out how in the heck am I going to photograph this thing? Well, 
Well, here it is, guys. Here's our tapestry slash tablecloth after it's been washed and dried, and I think it turned out amazing. It's really vibrant, and it turned out basically how I hoped it was going to. I love rainbows, and I think this is a great addition to, you know, like your hippie uh, kitchen. I think it could also be used for like a picnic blanket or a beach blanket. So what do you guys think of this tapestry? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.